Hi, I'm Ross Freeburn. I'm an intensive care specialist from Hawke's Bay in New Zealand. We've been using the Hamilton ventilators for about 10 years and uh, I wanted to show you today the PV tool, which is a tool that Hamilton have developed on their ventilators, which we've found quite useful for clinical practice. So the PV tool is a, essentially a automated super syringe that allows inflation and deflation curves to be created on the ventilator. To create it, I'll just come back to the, to the main screen. This is the screen of a ventilator that's working on an artificial lung and you can see the various parameters there. To get into the screen, we push the tools button, which opens up a menu and we select the PV tool over here. The PV tool has a screen here, which is where the, the uh, data will be displayed and the various settings. And we start and after a short period, when the machine goes quiet, the pressure starts and begins to build. So here we have the settings at uh, a pause of 10 seconds, peak pressure of, of 40, and uh, the ramp speed of two centimetres of water per second. And it builds, rising up, over, until we reach that peak pressure of 40 centimetres of water. It holds it for the 10 seconds that we've set, and during the 10 seconds you can see the volume rises and then it goes into the expiratory uh, phase and there's a slow two centimetres per of water per second fall in pressure until we reach the peak that was set before. And now we've created a very nice inspiratory and expiratory curve. This allows us to understand what is going on in the lung during the ventilation period. So when do we use the PV tool? Well, there's many patients that become hypoxic. Not all of them are open to recruitment manoeuvres. And those that are, we can demonstrate how much volume has been recruited. The patients that we wouldn't do this on are patients that have severe intracranial trauma or bleeding, patients in which we've demonstrated that severe the rise in pressure has caused harm in the past, such as during a PV manoeuvre, and those with a pneumothorax or high risk of developing pneumothoraces. The other thing that is very important and we often forget is that during this manoeuvre it's important to inflate the ET cuff to well above the peak pressure. What I'd like to talk about now is how we can use this PV tool to help us with the patients. We have used the PV tool to provide a mechanism of producing a, a repeatable recruitment manoeuvre which can be done by anybody trained in the simple art of pushing buttons. So how do we use it? Well, we often start with 40 centimetres of water of pressure and uh, that, is, that will recruit about half the patients that we need, that, that we use it on. However, some patients uh, do not respond to this and need higher levels and we often go up to 60 centimetres of water of recruitment during each manoeuvre. And we do this by sequentially increasing it if the lower levels do not work. A large number of patients need 50 to 55, and that's where the majority of patients seem to respond. After the manoeuvre has been completed, we can see that this volume of lung has been recruited over that time. And in patients that we have done, we've found that it improves oxygenation and potentially improves their lung mechanics. So we see the rise, this area here, which is the recruited lung, and that volume can both be measured and is repeatable when this uh, PV tool is used again and then it goes back to its ventilation. There are a number of ways to provide recruitment. This is one way that we've found is very easy to use, easily done by nursing and medical staff and we produce the same figures on each time. We use the, this recruitment manoeuvre after patients have been suctioned, after they've been turned and particularly when they become hypoxic. So why do we use this method of recruitment? There are a number of different ways of recruiting lung, so why would we use this tool? Well, we've found it useful. That's the simple answer. And it's useful because having set up the machine, it can be repeated at every opportunity that we need to, need to do it. After suctioning, after turning, or at any time the patient desaturates, it may be necessary to provide recruitment to improve the patient's oxygenation. By using the PV tool, this can be done by anybody 
in an intensive care unit trained in the use of, ve of the ventilator. Our nursing staff, our junior medical staff and our consultants can all use it at the time that's appropriate. And it can be done repeatedly. The role of recruitment manoeuvres of course remains a little bit controversial and we're not clear which is the best way to recruit the lung, how often we should do it, or when we should be doing it and how, how repeatedly we should be doing it. However, one of the advantages of using the PV tool over other methods is it does allow you to estimate the recruited volume here. And the recruited volume may be of value. And it allows us, when we repeat the manoeuvre, to, to measure different volumes to see if the, the timing of the recruitment is such that we no longer have extra lung to recruit. None of the other methods using the pressure, increasing pressure, do actually estimate or measure this volume. One of the potential uses of the PV tool is to set PEEP. Previously we've tried to set PEEP against oxygenation and a small number of studies have looked at it set against mechanical values on ventilation. The PV tool creates an inspiratory and expiratory pressure volume loop and we may be able to use this to find the ideal PEEP for that patient at that time. So here we're going to create a PV tool loop by setting the ramp speed at three centimetres of water per second with zero pause, a top pressure of 40 centimetres of water. The pressure at the start, I'm going to adjust down to five and the pressure at the end will be the same. We're now going to start closing that and accepting that we're going to change the peep. Start the inspiratory part of the cycle and then slowly the inspiratory curve will start with a rising pressure. We see arriving here at rising at uh, now three centimetres of water per second with no pause at the top and we see the expiratory f part of the cycle being created as it drops down, creating a nice hysteresis curve. Now, this curve having been created, there are a number of things we could look at. Historically, the inspiratory inflection point, which was probably on this curve somewhere in the order of seven or eight centimetres of water, was thought to be the place of best PEEP. However, we know that once patients are being ventilated, that their pressure does not drop down to here unless the PEEP is set at a very low level. Two other points have been described as being useful for setting PEEP. One is the upper inflection curve, which is described here, which would suggest that a PEEP of about 15 centimetres of water would be correct. The other point that has been described in, in a number of uh, articles now is the point of maximum hysteresis. That is where there's a maximum difference between the inspiratory and expiratory pause. And it's possible to create that and demonstrate that on this ventilator. By touching the screen, I can adjust this screen to produce this curve here, which is the delta volume difference in volume between the inspiratory and expiratory curves and you can see that's maximal at about 15 to 16 centimetres of water. By using about 70 to 80 percent of this, this number, so a PEEP of again about 15, is to be described as the best PEEP for that patient at that time. Now this is still an area of great research interest and in time we know which where the best PEEP would be that we can find for each patient. But at the moment this allows us a tool to at least examine the patient's lung mechanics at that time and to describe what we're doing. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you found this interesting. There's certainly a lot more work that we need to do to maximise the use of both the PV tool and its role in setting PEEP and in the recruitment manoeuvre. I find it of great interest that we actually don't know as much about ventilations as we'd like. 
But these tools allow us to examine what we're doing and perhaps with time have a greater understanding that we can use to help our patients.